again here at the Auburn Library. I would love for you to come join me here sometime soon, but today is story time and I'm so glad you came back to hang out with us. Real quick at the top, thank you to Sourcebooks and to Houghton Mifflin for allowing us to read together during this time when most of us are apart. So let's say hello. Do you guys remember how to say hello? During story time, we say it with American Sign Language, so we go like this. Nice, good job. Hello, and then we take our two fingers, our pointer fingers, and we hook them together like they're hugging, because this means friends. So we have, hello, friends. And we'll say that a couple times, and then we'll say it's time to say hello. Got it? All right, let's do it together. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Today we're going to talk about some of my very favorite animals. There are lots of animals all around us. In fact, if you're by a window, you might be able to look outside and see some animals where you are. I'm filming during the day so you can see things like squirrels and birds and they're all over Michigan. But there are other animals that live really close to us too that we don't see a lot because they only come out at night. We call those animals nocturnal. Can you say that word with me? Ready? Nocturnal. Yeah, that's when an animal is awake at night and sleeps during the day. There are lots of those around. You might have one in your house if you have a cat. Did you know cats are usually nocturnal? That's why they see so well in the dark. We have lots of other animals too, but one of my favorites is a bat. The reason I like bats so much is because they eat bugs. And not just a few bugs, they eat lots and lots of bugs, especially mosquitoes. They can eat up to 9,000 bugs in a single night. Can you imagine that? 9,000 mosquitoes in one bat. So before we read about bats, let's get ready for our story by stretching. So we're gonna put our arms way up in the air. Oh my goodness, it's pretty high. Can you can you go even higher to see if you can get as high as a bat flies? That's pretty high. How are you doing on your balance? Nice, you guys are getting better. <laughs> All right, put your whole foot back down on the ground. Okay, And now keep your knees straight and only bend your hips. If you don't know where your hips are, where your hands go like this, those are your hips, let's wiggle them just to make sure we got the right part. Okay, we got our hips wiggling. All right, now bend just at your hips and see if you can put your hands on your thighs, okay? See if you can go a little lower and put your hands on your knees. Can you go a little lower and put your hands on your shins? All right, this is the last big stretch. We're gonna see if we can touch our toes. Ugh, that's a nice stretch. Good job, guys. I see some of you even got a little farther than last week. You must have been practicing. Nice work. All right, now let's put out our right arm. And now our left arm. And we'll put our legs apart. Well, we have five points now. A point on top, two points on the side, and two points down on the bottom. What shape do we look like? Yeah, we look like a five-pointed star. So let's take our, let's start with our left point. We'll wiggle this one over here. Wiggle just your hand. See if you can keep your arms still while you do this. We're just trying to isolate, which means do something by itself. So we're wiggling just our hands and we're wiggling it all the way down to our right toe. Can you wiggle it all the way down? And we're crossing over so we use all of our brain together and come back up and look like a star. And wiggle just your left hand. Try to keep everything else still. Oh my gosh, that's really hard. You can wiggle just your fingers a lot easier than you wiggle your hands. And wiggle it all the way down to your left toe. And come back up. And do a half a jumping jack to look like a stick. Ready? Nice job. All right, now that we've looked like stars, let's look like the moon. Both of these things are out at night, right? When those nocturnal animals are awake, we're gonna bend backwards just a little, not too far. Don't hurt yourself and don't fall over, just a little bit. Now take a deep breath and melt down into your spot for a story. The first book I'm gonna read is pretty funny. I think this one it's called I Am Bat. This is our friend Bat. It's by a person named Morag Hood. I 
am bat. I do not like mornings. I like cherries. They are my favorite of all things. They are juicy and red and delicious and they are mine. If you take any of my cherries, I will be angry. Can you show me your good angry face? Angry. I will be ferocious like a lion, but smaller and with wings. I will just leave my cherries here. Do not touch them. I will know if you do one. How many cherries are there? How many pairs of cherries? Let's count. We have one, two, three, Four bunches of cherries. Uh oh. What's happening in there? <gasps> My cherries! Some of them are missing. Where did they go? What's happening? Who stole? my cherries. Was it you? I see you, Miss Stacy. My poor cherries. <laughs> I, you'll never be happy again. like pears. I am bat. Do not take my pear. <laughs> that, that's pretty silly, huh? What happened to all of his cherries? The story doesn't say anything about it, but what did you see? After we counted them, what happened? There's a lion and a frog. See his little eyeball and his hands there? and a goose and we don't see those animals until over here but did you even notice the fourth animal carrying away his cherry there were two ants carrying away the last two but then they gave him a pear so he didn't feel so sad <laughs> that was a pretty silly story okay Grown-ups, one of the things we do during story time together is we work on building our vocabulary. So the more words that your child knows when they encounter them while reading, the easier it will be for them to decode. So it's important to use the actual words for many of the things that your child might see around you and to talk about them. So kids, I know that you know your animals because I have seen many of you here at the library. So let's see if we can name some of these Michigan nocturnal animals. Do you remember what nocturnal means? Yeah, it means that they're awake at night. So let's see, here's the first one. That is a bat. That is in fact a little brown bat. That's one of the, um, one of the bats that's most common here in Michigan. We like them because they eat mosquitoes. How about this guy? Pee he's a skunk. He probably, you don't know it, but there are probably skunks that live really close to you. They don't stink unless they get scared. So if you keep your distance, it should be okay. How about this guy? I'm sure you've seen one of him. He's a raccoon. Yeah, I heard you guys say that. He has a little mask on his eyes. What's cool about raccoons is they wash their hands and their food before they eat. Do you wash your hands before you eat? Yeah, that's an important thing to do. How about these guys? This one's a little harder. Do you know what they are? I picked a picture of them in a tree because we don't see them in trees a lot, but they can climb. These are North American porcupines. See their long quills sticking off of their back? Yeah. How about this guy? He can hang upside down by his tail. 
Uh, he's real slow too, which is unfortunate for him. He is a possum. We have these a lot around here. This one's probably one you recognize. He is a white-tailed deer, and he's a buck. You can tell because he has big antlers off the top of his head. This one's going to be hard. This is the tricky one this week. I always try to include a tricky one. You might never have seen one of these. There aren't a lot of them in Michigan anymore, but they do still live here. It's called a badger. They live in holes, burrows that they usually dig at the bottom of big trees. You would see them in the forest. this guy. Have you ever seen one of him around here? He's a red fox. This is a picture of him in winter. He doesn't blend in very well in the winter. <laughs> and here's the last one. What do you think he is? He's an owl, yeah. He's a great gray owl. And I thought he was kind of fun looking because he has those big eyes with the feathers that make them look even bigger. He's one of the largest owls that we have here. Not the heaviest, just the biggest. Kind of cool, right? So there are lots of animals in Michigan when it's dark out that we don't usually get to see. But now if you do see them, you know what to call them. All right, it's time for our opposite song. So. To remind you, we're gonna go big. So stretch your arms out big, you've got big. Nice. And then we've got small. And then we've got short and get as close to the ground as you can. If you can get all the way down, go for it. And then we've got tall. Then we have yes, and we'll nod our head yes. And we have no, and we'll shake our head no. And then we'll go fast. And then we'll go slow. Ready? Here's go. This is big, big, big. This is small, small, small. This is short, short, short. This is tall, tall, tall. This is yes, yes, yes. This is no, no, no. This is fast, fast. This is slow, slow, slow. Nice job, guys. All right, Whew, I gotta take a deep breath and a drink of water. I'm gonna read you another book about bats because I like them. This book is called Bats at the Beach. I'm gonna get a little closer for this one. You won't be able to see my face, but I want you to be able to see the pictures. Now, grownups, you'll notice that as I am reading through this book, I'm going to point at a lot of the things on the pictures, same as I did in the last book. It's important that when you're reading, you can talk through the pictures in a picture book the same way that you would talk through the text. About 95% of the time, the child is watching the pictures more closely than the text anyway. So feel free to use that opportunity to build some of that vocabulary by talking about what's happening. Bats at the Beach by Brian Lies. Sun slips down and all is still, and soon we can't tell sky from hill. Now from barn and cave and rafter, bats pour out with shrieks of laughter. Oops, it didn't quite, there we go. How delicious, oh how sweet to feed, feel warm sand beneath our feet. Quick, set up, spread blankets on sand. We want to get going when fun is at hand. We hurry down to test the ocean. Don't forget the moon tan lotion. What's the first thing we should do? So many games before nights through. See the bats have their little beach umbrellas. And they've got, they're coming down with their own beach umbrella. He's got snacks. What do you think bats eat? Do we, I think we mentioned that. We talked about that. Okay. Like playing with the stuff we find, which others must have left behind. Look, if you, le if you left your sandcastle bucket and your shovel at the beach, the bats might play with it when they get there. 
burying friends from chin to knee. Can you point at your chin? Yeah, and then all the way down to your knee. We're scratchy where no sand should be. Making friends from other places with different foods and different faces. Or sailing to terrific heights, taking turns at being kites. Little bats dig their sand caves deep as old bats lie in the moon asleep. Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever fallen asleep at the beach? Or maybe has your grown-up fallen asleep at the beach? What are they playing over here? Do you see? Yeah, they're playing volleyball. Nice. There's really no more thrilling ride than surfing on a summer tide or sailing in the wing boat races. See how they're on boats? With salty sea spray in our faces. Now it's munch time. What to eat? Baskets grown with yummy treats. Beetles, ants, and milkweed bugs. Crickets, moths, and pickled slugs. Damselflies or salted skeeters. No room here for picky eaters. Would you ever eat beetles and mosquitoes for a snack? I don't think I would. I've eaten crickets before though. Chocolate covered. Bug mallows toast on slender sticks while cousins do their ocean tricks. Look at those cousins doing their ocean tricks. It's pretty high. I don't think I could stand that tall. And later on, though stomachs hurt, We'll try the snack bar for dessert. I thought all the bugs gathered around the lights so the bats come up. Then east sky purples. Sun is coming. At least a few notes of banjo strumming bring our beach night to an end. So say farewell to newfound friends. Pack our things up, shake the sand out. Give the noisy gulls a handout. Do you see over here? There's a big seagull head and all of those snacks that those uh, bats brought with them, they're given to the seagull. Quick, let's go. Let's fly away. We've got to be home before it's day. Flutter homeward, drained and weary. Small bats doze off, tired and teary. Day birds start to chip and peep. Now back to crack and crevice creep. We sigh and snuggle close together to dream about the moony weather. Shh, now sleep. The moon's out of reach. The night was just perfect for bats at the beach. Have you ever seen a bat when you go to the beach? No? Usually we're at the beach during the daytime. I've seen bats when I'm there at night, but usually we don't see them. All right. Real quick, we're gonna do a couple rhymes. So this rhyme goes like this. I have my words so I don't forget them. It goes, there's something in the nighttime that I can't really see. There's something in the nighttime. Now what? Can it be? Who? Who? Hear its funny sound. Who? Who? What did you find? An owl is what I found. Good job. Let's try it again. Let's see if we can guess a different animal. There's something in the nighttime that I can't really see. There's something in the nighttime. Now what could it be? Meow. Meow. Hear its funny sound. A cat is what I found. One more, ready? Let's see if you can guess this one. This one's harder. There's something in the nighttime that I can't really see. There's something in the nighttime. Now what can it be? Ooh. Ooh. It's a wolf. Yeah, a wolf howling at the moon. I'm not a wolf. It was an okay. Can you make a better wolf sound than that? Let's hear it. 
That is a much better wolf sound. You are right. That is a much better wolf sound. All right. We're going to do one more song about owls. This is to a song that you already know. It's, called, it's to the tune, to the music of, the wheels on the bus. So we know that one. But this one goes, the owls in the forest go, who, 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 who. The owls in the forest go, who, 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 all night long. Ready? Let's do that one together. The owls in the forest go, who, who, who. rabbits and they're going bounce. Can you bounce? I don't know if I can bounce and play. We're going to try it. The rabbits in the forest go bounce, 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 bounce. The rabbits in the forest go bounce, bounce, bounce all night long. Good job. Let's try one more and let's go back to bats. They're going to flap, flap, flap. Can you flap your wings? I can't flap in place. You guys will have to do all of the flapping for me. Got it? But you can do this. All right, ready? The bats in the forest go flap, 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 flap. The bats in the forest go flap, flap, flap all night long. Great job, guys. Excellent work. But it's already time to say goodbye. So when we say goodbye at story time, we say it in American Sign Language. So we go like this. This means goodbye. So we've got goodbye, and then we use that friends one again, where we take our fingers and hug them together. So we have goodbye, friends. And then at the end, we'll say it's time to say goodbye. Ready? Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye. Thank you so much for joining me for story time. Hopefully I'll see you next week and you have a wonderful week. Hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye.